Welcome back to statisticalprogramming.net. On this beautiful day, on Sunday afternoon, we're going to start a video series on optimization. Understanding the fundamentals of optimization is non-negotiable to be a data scientist. Many data scientists apply optimization techniques directly in problems like matching promotional offers to customers, scheduling workers or pricing against demand. So it is certainly necessary to understand from a practical standpoint. But even if you don't have an optimization problem in your day-to-day -day duties, understanding the fundamentals is still vital. This is because the most popular machine learning problems like XGBoost, regression, deep learning, all utilize some kind of optimization at their core. More broadly, all common predictive algorithms seek to solve a class of problems known as maximum likelihood estimations, which are, of course, an optimization problem. So as always, let's break optimization down, starting from its fundamentals. LeBron James wants to maximize points on the board. Jeff Bezos wants to maximize shareholder value. And when you send your kid out on the soccer field, you tell them, do your best which is another way of saying, get the most you can out of whatever you have. In life, we are all aware that there are limitations of what can be achieved. And we recognize that the best outcome is one where we have realized the fullest potential possible. Optimization is a tool to let you do just that, assuming your problem can be cleanly represented along mathematical lines. In a world where decisions are becoming increasingly automated, Mathematical optimization is and will continue to play a huge role in shaping our world, and there's room to make a big impact if you can help define problems this way. The best place to start is defining what the mathematical outcome is that we're trying to achieve. Optimization problems can take the form of either minimization or maximization. Data scientists, for example, may want to maximize the revenue of their company. Whereas an AI game developer may want to minimize or maximize the points of their AI. And hospital stakeholders are probably looking to maximize patient health, um, while a self-driving engineer may want to minimize the probability of a collision. In our example, we'll pretend that we're a financial engineer or an analyst, and we're looking to minimize cost. The objective functions are all affected in some way by decision variable, which often but not always interacts with another set of variables. The decision variable has its value set by the optimization problem during the solution in order to either minimize or maximize the objective. In this example of minimizing cost, the cost is the dot product of a binary decision to include some item and its cost. To perform a dot product, we multiply the two arrays and then sum the results. So in this case, we get 42. Now, how do we conclude that 42 was the best we could do? That would be because of constraints. Constrained optimization problems are very common in practical settings. If we want to limit our decision variables to certain values, like the binary decision variable in our objective function, that's a form of constraint. In our example, another variable that we may want to constrain might be the dot product of our decision variable times the utility per item. And we're going to say that has to be at least 27. And by the way, if you're bored enough to actually go back up into the video and confirm that we got the right answer, given these constraints, it should work out for you. Let me know how it goes in the comments. Well, now that we've defined what we want, we could represent it with this kind of scary looking equation. And just to walk through what one of these looks like, we're seeking to minimize the dot product of cost times our binary selector variable, given the utility is at least 27, and those selector variables need to stay at either one or zero. In an upcoming video, we'll show how to represent problems like this in Pyomo, which I can assure you is a lot more fun and interesting than seeing them in written in ancient Greek, at least to me. Now, this is a simple example to start out with, and it would be pretty easy to solve in the real world. However, often problems are not as easy. For example, if we wanted to minimize the distance between the total cost and some other figure G, uh, which you might be, which we might imagine could be some competitor's cost or 
uh, something similar. In this case, our objective becomes a form of the Euclidean distance equation, which is quadratic. In optimization, a quadratic objective function, which has variables constrained to integers or binary, is actually, con is actually non-convex. And this means we will need to expand much more resources to solve compared to the original problem. The change we made was to one part of the equation, but suddenly our options to solve were radically altered. It's safe to say it's very important to understand the difference between convex and non-convex problems. For convex problems, every local minimum is a global minimum, and to qualify as convex, both the solution and the uh, function have to be convex. A convex function might look like this. Uh, you can see that a minimum point would be fairly easy to find. Meanwhile, problems are non-convex if quite simply any part of the problem or solution space is non-convex. A non-convex problem might look like this, which is quite believable that it might take longer to solve than its neighbor. A crucial reason to have a good understanding of when problems are convex versus non-convex is their runtimes. In general, convex problems will arrive at either an optimal or acceptable solution faster. However, some convex problems are still NP-hard. However, others can be reliably solved in polynomial time, and certain subproblems can be solved in less than polynomial time. Meanwhile, all non-convex problems are at best NP-hard. Not all convex problems are alike in their structure or solvability. Six general convex problems are seen here and generally getting simpler to solve as the circle gets smaller. The linear program, second order cone program, and semi-definite cone program can all be solved in poly polynomial time at worst. While the other classes of problems are at worst NP-hard, many individual problems within them can be solved much faster. Some examples of common convex problems are linear regression, which minimizes the sum of squared errors between the points in a line, and also mixed integer programming problems, such as selecting which cu customers to offer a certain promotion to. Now, what with them being so terribly difficult to solve, non-convex problems do seem like a lot less fun than convex. But it's important to remember that to be solved in mathematical terms means to be absolutely sure that your answer is the optimal one out of all possibilities. And because non-convex problems are all NP-hard, that means that we would literally have to check every single possibility to be sure of its solution. However, in the real world, it's often good enough to find a close approximation or an acceptable uh, quote unquote optimal solution for to have a lot of real practical value. And through some te clever techniques, data scientists and mathematicians have gotten very good at certain non-convex problems, uh, creating solutions called heuristics. And this is a good thing because in a complex world, non-convex problems come up very, very often. Perhaps you've heard of neural networks, which power self-driving cars and facial recognition. While their individual layers are often convex, the whole network is very much non-convex, which is part of the reason there's still an art into making them useful as machine learning tools. Perhaps a future breakthrough in general AI will be caused by making a difficult non-convex problem into convex. But for now, it's important for data scientists to have a good understanding of optimized problems and understand their options when a problem is convex versus non-convex. In the next video, we'll look at Pyomo, which is an algebraic modeling language in Python and a great way to practically apply optimization. I'll see you then.